Hey guys, it's Finn. In this video I'm going to show you something about genetic algorithms and they are pretty amazing. I've worked with them in the past a little bit and they're like crazy when you think about what you can do with them. And they are actually very simple to understand so I'll give it a try to show you how they work. So um, let's start with something. Let's say it's a client. We're going to call it a client in the future that exists in a um, in the in the world, like the the blue thing right now is the world. The orange dot is like the client that exists in the world. Um, usually, what we did in the past, we had like one network or one client that let's say trained the MNIST set or something like that. And what we are going to do now in a genetic algorithm is we are going to take multiple clients, something like this. So um, how the genetic algorithm works? Very simple is that we are going to let those those clients live in this world. We're going to see how good they are in this world, how good they behave. We're going to score them. We're going to select like the best of them. Um, what we're going to do next is we're going to kill the rest. And what we're going to do then is we're going to reproduce the rest um, by taking the survivors. And what we're going to end up with is something like this. And I'm going to teach you, I'm going to show you how these uh, steps work in detail. So let's get started with one simple client and what it actually contains or what data it needs to contain. So um, obviously it lives in a world so there's data coming into into the client and it's usually like it could be x and y position, it could be world coordinates, something like collision boxes or whatever, it could be anything. You can choose it uh, whatever you want. Um, the, ne the next thing is it like has to return something. It make it might be its own controls in the world if it's if it wants to move upwards or downwards, something like this. So we're going to have data coming out of uh, out of our client, and we of of course we need to have uh, something inside the client that um, determines how we are going to um, act on a given input. It's like in the new network we had the wakes, but this is like a general thing. So we are not talking about neural networks right now, we're talking about any data. It could be just an array. We don't know what's inside. It doesn't matter for us. Um, it could be like binary. We don't really care. It could be, we could have numbers. Uh, we could really have anything. Um, when we take a new network, it's just like we are giving weights or like the new network form just describes how we're going to deal with those numbers in those arrays. Like how we're going to uh, multiply them or what exactly, what calculations we are doing. But we don't care about the calculations right now. We only care about the data. And the data is the only thing that determines how the output will be for any given input. So it's not about neural networks, it's just like about any form of using this data to transform the input into the output. So obviously when our client lived in the world, um, it's probably going to die at some point or just like, uh, we're going to give it a score for how good it behaved in the world. It could be like, let's say we're playing a game. Uh, it could be like its score. It could be how long it survived in an, any game or something like that. Um, so we're going to apply a score and I just choose 42 for that right now. And this is like it what one client needs for now. We have like the data that determines how it's, uh, it determines its behavior. And we have the score for this behavior in the world. So let's go back to the start where we had our um, world with our clients inside. And um, the first thing that we usually do is like we, we let them live, we let them behave, we see how they perform, and we're going to score them. And the first thing we do then is we're going to select. Um, each step that I'm showing you right now um, can be implemented in any way, like you can choose how you want to do the selections uh, or the stuff after that. It It's absolutely up to you. I'm just going to show you like those three basic steps and a very simple, simple implementation of that. Um, so the first thing is the selection. So it's very simple to just take like the best. We can take like the best four or five. I'm going to just choose, choose the best four. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to kill the rest. And this is already part of the crossover step. So the crossover is like we're going to kill the rest and we're going to repopulate our um, um, 
we're going to repopulate our clients. So we're going to respawn them and I talked about the data that determines how we're going to transform an inf input to an output and what we go what we are going to do is we're going to choose two parents. Um, this can be random, this can be based on score, this can like it's absolutely up to you. Um, what I'm going to stick with now is I'm going to choose two random parents like um, of those who survived. We can just choose like this four and the five in the middle and we're going to take like the data of them. What we're going to do then is we're going to um, take a, a newborn and this looks kind of complicated right now but it's actually very simple. What we do is we take the data of or like the, the uh, yeah let's, let's just call it the data. We're going to take the data of our parents. We're going to choose if we want to take the data in one point of um, the parent or of parent A or of parent B and you can there are like a lot of methods for that. Um, let's stick with something very simple. We're going to choose randomly which data we take. We can, for example, take like either this or this. This for each of these. So um, this is absolutely random right now. So we can choose either this. Um, and for the next one, we can choose either this or this and so on. And this is going to be put into the, uh, into the data of the newborn. We're going to do this for every newborn. So for each newborn we're going to select two random parents. Uh, we're going to um, select for each of the data points one random data point. Or like we're going to uh, choose if it's uh, given by parent A or parent B. And again this is like you can implement this the way you want. There are so many different methods for that. So um, like tr uh, s selecting it randomly is one method. It's not very good but it's one method and it works. Um, the last thing that we want to do is like we, we repopulated our population right now. Every uh, client in the world has uh, new data except of those who survived. And what we're going to do then is we're going to do the mutation. And um, this is also very simple I think. Um, what we do is for each of the clients, also of those who survived, we're going to, tra uh, we're going to take the data and we're going to tweak each of the data points and uh, how we're going to tweak them is also randomly. Um, we can add like um, a random number. It's uh, Usually you take the Gaussian normal distribution for that. It's um, I think between minus like roughly between minus 3 and 3 but it's very close to, to 0. Like the, the probability of a number be close to 0 is higher than being close to uh, 3 or something like that. So um, it's like I think 67% of all the data points are in between minus 1 and 1. Uh, I think it's 97% between minus 2 and 2 and uh, only 1% is out of minus 3 and 3. So uh, this is usually done and you can have like parameters for that. You can say how um, many of these are mu being mutated. You do not have to mutate every one of these. You can say, okay, only I only want to mutate 10% of my data points and my mutation strength is going to be, let's say, 0 0.1. So we are not going to take, or no, we're not going to add the Gaussian normal distribution. We're going to add the Gaussian normal distribution times a specific value so that we're not going to add 1 or 2, but maybe um, 0.1 or 0.2. And Actually, this is already it for this video. And in the next video, I'm going to implement this very simple in Java. And I hope to see you then.